In this video, I'm going to show you how to add an image to text in Affinity Photo. Let's start by creating a new empty document where we can add our text. Select File, then New in the Affinity Photo menu. We'll make the image the same size as a YouTube thumbnail which is 1920 by 1080 pixels. Although there's a preset for this in the web section, I'll show you how to define your own. Start by setting the document units to pixels and then orientation to landscape. Now enter the width as 1920 pixels and the height as 1080 pixels. We don't need to change the DPI setting because you only need that for printing. In the colour section, set the colour format to be RGB 16 bit and the colour profile to be sRGB. Then click the Create button to produce an empty document where we can add text. To add the text, we need to use one of the tools. Affinity has two text tools in the Tools palette. There's the Frame Text tool, which is really for adding blocks of text. It's a bit like a word processor and we don't want that. The other is the Artistic Text tool, which is the one we need to use. Because the two text tools are grouped, you might need to click this small grey triangle to the bottom right of the icon. This displays the tools in the group and you can pick the one you want. That icon then appears in the tools palette. Click on the document and drag with your mouse to select the size of text you want. Don't worry if you don't get it right, I'll show you how to change it shortly. After releasing the mouse button, enter the text you want to use for this effect. In this example it's the word coffee. Now click the move tool in the tools palette which finishes the text entry. The Move tool allows us to click and drag the text to reposition it. We then need to open the image we want to add to the text. I've chosen this photo of coffee beans. Copy the image using the Edit menu, but you can also use the Command and C shortcut. That's Ctrl and C on a PC. Switch to the document with the text and paste the image that you've copied. You'll see that it's added in the Layers Studio panel as a new image layer. If I hide the image layer you can see the text again because the pixels of the image layer are covering it. The next bit is the tricky part because you need to drag and drop the image onto the text layer but in a very specific position. First move the image over the text layer so that a blue line appears below it. This shows where the new layer is going to be added to what we call the layer stack. But don't immediately drop it in this position. Instead, drag it over to the right so that the blue line becomes indented. Affinity Photo should then show a preview of the text filled with the image. That's when you can release the image layer and drop it into position. If you don't drag to the right so that the blue line's indented, it won't work. Instead, you'll just see the regular text. The problem we now have is that the text isn't wide enough to show the image so that you don't know these are coffee beans. Let's fix that by changing the font. Click on the layer with the text in the Layer Studio panel to select it. We can then adjust the text settings in the Affinity Photo toolbar. First, try changing to a bold version of the font if there is one. Another option is to change to a heavier font. Something like the Impact font usually works well and most people have this installed. If you can't find a suitable font to use, head over to Google Fonts and find a free one to download there. You can position the text on the page by clicking and dragging with the Move tool. Click the layer with the text in the Layer Studio panel to select it, then drag the text into position. Notice how the image and text move together. You can also reposition the image separately to the text by selecting it in the Layer Studio panel. Then click and drag the image to position it. The effect's looking better, but it's still tricky to see the coffee beans because the image is too large. We'll fix this by resizing the image with the Move tool. Select the image by clicking it in the Layers Studio panel. This displays an outline around the image with drag handles in the corner and on the centres of the edges. Click on one of the corner handles and whilst holding down your mouse button, drag. This resizes the image to make it larger or smaller. We use the corner drag handles and not the ones on the edges because it keeps the image in proportion. If you resize the image from the edges, it's going to change the aspect ratio which squashes the image. You now have an image added to your text, but there are a couple of refinements to make. Let's make the text easier to read by adding a thin outline to it. First select the text layer in the Layers Studio panel by clicking it. 
you can then click the Layer Effects icon at the bottom of the panel. This opens the Effects dialog, which we can use to add special effects to the text. Click the Outline option to display the controls. Then click the tick mark to the left of the Outline option to turn it on. We now need to set how wide an outline to add to the text using the Radius slider. Setting a radius of 1 to 2 pixels is all that's really needed. We can then position the outline with our alignment drop down. This has options to add the outline to the inside, outside or centre edge of the text. Watch the area between the two letter F's to see the difference. With this font, we need to set the alignment to inside, otherwise the letters start to run into each other. Finally, I'm going to change the colour of the outline because black is a bit too harsh. Clicking the colour swatch opens a colour picker dialog where we can manually set the colour. For this text, it would be nice to use a dark brown colour. We can take a sample from the image by clicking and dragging the sample tool onto an area of the image. The sample colour then appears in the dialog, which we can then click to select. Notice the difference when I turn the outline off and on. It's subtle, but the text is easier to read with the outline. The other effect we'll add is a drop shadow, which Affinity Photo calls an outer shadow. Click the tick mark to activate the effect, and then click the heading to display the controls. Use the radius slider to set how large the shadow effect is. The offset to define how far from the text the shadow appears. Then the intensity slider to control how strong the effect is. The finished image text looks good, doesn't it? I hope you found this video helpful. Here's another of my videos that YouTube thinks you might enjoy watching next.